okay so welcome once again and uh, we will be studying from the book of acts in this semester uh, and as i told you already we are going to uh, have an overview of the book of acts today so we will begin there but before we uh, get into our uh, uh, you know study of the book can we can we have a word of prayer so anyone could you please lead and open out this time with a word of prayer please anybody i'll pray you yes yes kiran please go ahead father god we come before you throne father god once again father god in this a meeting to your hand father god to nancy my man every student father god gave uh, gave us to wisdom and knowledge and understanding today book father father give you any know Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, so, thank you, Kiran, for leading in prayer. We couldn't hear you uh, for a bit, but uh, that's all right. Uh, thank you so much for uh, um, you know praying for God's wisdom and leading. Okay, so as we begin the book of Acts, um, I wanted to hear from you uh, what your picture is about the book of Acts. Uh, I'm sure you know many of us have read it. Maybe you've read it many times. Okay, so you can tell me, you know, what what you think about the book of Acts. What do you think is there in the book of Acts? Now just go ahead you can you know unmute yourself and uh, share the, the work of the holy spirit the work of the holy spirit great excellent yeah you see that throughout the book of acts anything else yes ma'am after uh, jesus uh, went to heaven uh, jesus gave to some revelation to paul and mm. paul uh, described to every and through holy spirit uh, paul described to uh, what god is spoke to paul mm -hmm. and paul wrote that book mm -hmm. okay 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 yeah thanks for sharing uh, kiran thanks for sharing we will we will discuss all these things uh, in detail okay as we go further yes thank you kiran anyone else maybe one more person can share your opinion of the book of acts encounter with jesus encounter with jesus okay Okay, yes, very um, uh, interesting encounter with Jesus. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Thanks, uh, Manu. Thank you for um, you know putting that across. All right. So, what we will do now is we will uh, uh, try to have. an overview and when we say overview it's a high level um understanding of the book of acts and we will see uh you know what are what are some of the key themes that emerge in the book of acts there are many details which we will look at uh, in each class as we go further but today it's like you know a high level um view so uh, as we start this out Okay. Uh, some differences that you would find in uh, the book of Acts as compared to the Gospels. In the Gospels, you have an eyewitness account of the life of Jesus. So you have um, um, the birth of Jesus recorded in, in the Gospels. You have his ministry recorded. You have his teachings recorded there, uh, and you also have the trial. right um that jesus uh, was put through and the fact that he was killed he was um, uh buried uh, he uh, he he rose from the dead so that much you see in the gospels and yes uh, in in some of the writings you find that there is a continuation of this risen 
there is uh, the risen christ and uh, uh, what he the message that he brings as well right so uh, that is seen in the gospel so you see the lord jesus walking about in the gospels now if we begin reading from acts chapter 1 you will have the resurrected christ okay in the book of acts as well so you will have you will read about um, the lord jesus uh, speaking to the disciples and then you will uh, find the ascension of the lord jesus in the first chapter of the book of acts but from then on uh, we do not uh, see jesus by that what i mean is here on the earth right we don't we don't see the uh, resurrected jesus on the face of the earth anymore yes we do have uh, jesus speaking to people and, and appearing later in the book of acts but um, uh, primarily from heaven okay so that is one difference that you observe so when we look at the trinity you also have the holy spirit isn't it so you find a um a work of the holy spirit described in greater detail in the book of acts now if you recall you no know, in the gospels jesus tells his uh, you know he he uh, is resurrected he breathes on his uh, disciples and they are born again right and then he tells them to wait you tarry tarry meaning wait and uh, uh, until you receive the power from on high uh, and then that power from on high refers to the holy spirit the baptism in the holy spirit uh, and then the book of acts begins to unfold so this is a difference you know in the gospels you have the the uh, uh, the lord jesus walking the earth but in the book of acts only in the first chapter you have the resurrected christ who is ministering to his disciples but then on it's mostly uh, about the holy spirit and the work of the holy spirit through the apostles that you observe okay so uh, that is something for us to understand and also another uh, nice thing that that you observe is you have the teachings of the lord jesus in uh, uh, the gospels if you recall we generally refer to uh, matthew chapter 16 uh, verse 18 where jesus said that i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it so uh, he had indicated that the church would be a very powerful entity uh, here on the face of the earth now we don't necessarily mean you know powerful in the worldly sense uh, but powerful with spiritual influence right so he says i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it so you know through our prayer through our um uh release of the power of god uh, into people's lives through our ministry you know the the church releases that glory of god and makes an impact uh and the teachings which are in the form of you could say the seed right whatever jesus said this is going to happen this is how the church is going to be i give you the keys of the kingdom you find that in the book of acts the believers are actually walking in those things you know those seeds take root so we will study how the church is birthed and how the church grows and how the church begins to make an impact on their region and then begins to spread out to other parts of the world as well so the teachings of the lord jesus uh, and and his uh, um indication of the church being a powerful entity in the gospels is actually seen uh, you know in a practical way in the book of acts as the believers begin to demonstrate the power of the holy spirit now another difference that you observe is in the book of acts jesus is that uh, leader or master who is speaking to his uh, disciples and uh, you know you they follow along wherever he goes and they they try to do whatever he teaches them to do but you still notice that they were not as brave okay and they did not have a sense of purpose um, you know to the extent which they needed to fulfill their apostolic callings so at the death when jesus is being tried you find uh, 
great apostles like Peter are showing their cowardice, right? They, Peter runs away uh, or Peter denies Christ and he just wants to preserve himself. Uh, however, in the book of Acts, there is a very uh, great transformation that you observe in the lives of these disciples. They become so bold. They become so bold uh, and uh, they are not afraid of, of anything, anyone, but they go forward with that sense of purpose and they know the mandate which God has given them. So, you know, you see here some differences from the Gospels to the book of Acts. And why does this happen in the lives of the disciples? We can uh, uh, consider what Jesus said, right? Uh, he said, you tarry until you receive the Holy Spirit. And then once they received the Holy Spirit, they had this kind of boldness upon them. And, uh, you know, they, they did uh, an amazing, amazing work. So the book of Acts uh, is, is uh, called as the Acts of the Apostles, okay? Uh, uh, also, because the work of God was done through the apostles. Now, there are a lot of people who um, uh, just use the term acts. Uh, and then though the apostles did the work, uh, it, it is said that these were actually the acts of the Holy Spirit. Yes, these were the acts of the Holy Spirit, uh, but through the apostles. So acts of the Holy Spirit, acts of the apostles. And you see a very big difference in the way the apostles uh, live out their lives uh, in the book of Acts after the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Okay. So uh, another uh, difference that I just want to bring to our attention is the way people respond to persecution. So in the Gospels, the disciples once again don't um, uh, look very strong and confident to face opposition. But in the book of Acts, you will find opposition in, in many places because the disciples try to take new territory for the sake of the gospel. But the persecution never stops them. Okay, so we, we will see that persecution uh, doesn't stop them in different places. God gives them the wisdom to escape the persecution. And in some places where they have to undergo persecution, they always come out stronger. And uh, uh, that shows us, that shows us that what is meant, the fire which is meant to destroy uh, actually becomes the fuel of the church and the church begins to spread far and wide uh, and uh, you you see that uh, uh, the disciples uh, and you know the, the 12 disciples of the lord jesus uh, actually uh, 11 because judas betrayed him but uh, those who continued uh, with the with the mandate of the gospel you know they uh, in many ways are so strong as they face persecution. So this is also something that you observe the way they responded to persecution in the Gospels. It's very different from the way they um, face it in the Book of Acts. So just uh, some of the the um, uh, changes that I want you to understand first, um, and then we will uh, continue right looking at uh, many other things from the book of Acts. So uh, now let's see uh, a little bit about the background of the book of Acts. Okay. The um, time when the Lord Jesus was crucified, okay, that we, we uh, would say that it's somewhere around 33 AD. Okay. And uh, after that, immediately after that, because once the Lord Jesus was resurrected from the dead, I told you, Acts chapter 1, you have the resurrected Christ, okay? And he uh, ascends uh, into heaven, and then you have the um, uh, disciples, and not just the disciples, but you have other faithful followers of Christ with the disciples, all of them waiting in Jerusalem. So you have 120 people in the upper room, and then the outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, takes place. Okay, so so they are they are waiting, uh, and it's it's in a matter of days, right? In a matter of days that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, happens, and then the uh, the ministry you see the ministry of Peter unfolding, and then you know, eventually many other people come into the scene, and the gospel is spreading far and wide. So uh, 33 AD is when we would um, trace back 
the um, uh, events of the book of Acts. And you could uh, extend that uh, as you observe what the events that are unfolding. You could say that you know, till about 62 AD, till about 62 AD, the events are covered in the book of Acts. Okay, so 33 to uh, 62 AD. So uh, the time span over which the book of Acts uh, took place or the events of Acts took place is uh, about 30 years. Okay, so it, it is 30 years. Now, when we read it, we might not really uh, look at it that way, but it was actually 30 years, Okay, 30 years of time that went by as these events unfolded. Now, who is the person who wrote the book of Acts? Anybody wants to take a guess? Luke. Yes, you're right. Yes. Yes, Luke. Luke is the author of the book of Acts. Okay. Uh, now, Luke wrote this book and uh, he is a physician, as many of us already know, uh, but he's also a historian. He's also a historian and uh, uh, like a teacher because when you read the way he brings out these accounts, uh, he is well read. Okay, he makes good connections, good associations. Uh, he talks about uh, events very clearly. Uh, he uh, describes the the social, um, uh, you know, the the social. The, the kind of setting, the social setting of the times. He describes the geography. He describes the, um, uh, you know, the, the um, status of the people. So many things. It's very, very well read uh, and uh, very well informed. Okay. So uh, that's the kind of individual that Luke is. And uh, uh, he is the one who has written the book of Acts. And as you read it, uh, you you would the writings of Luke you would understand that he actually he says that you know I'm writing to you Theophilus okay Theophilus um, seems to be a good person during the times of uh, Luke who also uh, supposedly had authority okay some form of governmental authority now there are people who say that uh, the book of uh, book of Luke and the book of Acts uh, are in continuation. So uh, Luke did not necessarily write two separate books. Now we have it as two books in the Bible, but um, you know historians say that it was probably written as one big narration and then um, it was cut into two parts one as the book of Luke and then the other one as the Acts of the Apostles. Um, now also you know there are people uh, historians who, who say that uh, the narration that uh, Luke has of the book of Acts uh, it may actually be a legal document okay so he didn't write it to describe um, what was going on in his times now if you look at the gospels it seems like that you know it's an eyewitness account whatever they saw they wrote it down okay so and so said this jesus did this they wrote those things down uh the book of luke is like that but when you read the book of acts uh it also kind of throws light on the fact that it was the holy spirit who was doing this powerful work after the uh, ascension of Jesus uh, and through his people. Uh, and, you know, the, the fact that whatever work was being done through the people of God, that it was not a threat to the Roman government. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, historians say that uh, Luke would have written this account um, for the defense of Paul. Right uh, to say that uh, Paul has been transformed by the living God, and the ministry of Paul uh, it is a ministry that comes from God Himself, the very God that the Jews worship, and the, also the fact that Paul is not a threat. Okay, in fact, he is a, a law-abiding and a law-upholding citizen. So when Paul was in trial, uh, uh, you know maybe. Luke wrote all this to submit it as a document to the authorities to uh, defend Paul when he was in trial. So a lot of historians take that view and uh, feel that 
you know this writing was actually a legal document now as we continue on in the book of acts there are many many things right that we will observe so uh, i i will try and uh, you know take you through uh, these portions one by one uh firstly you know you you would see that there are um different people okay, different people whom you will meet from chapter 1 all the way till chapter 28 okay so uh, the prominent person in chapter uh, chapter 2 is peter okay in, if in fact even in uh, chapter 1 is peter because he uh, takes on leadership over the uh, disciples almost automatically you know, if you observe the personality of peter even when jesus was there he would speak he would be the first one to speak okay uh, so he was somebody who had that ability to take charge immediately take charge so um in that way he continues to take charge from acts chapter 1 and then acts chapter 2 after the outpouring of the holy spirit you know you observe him rising up and making his first uh, speaking his first sermon okay which had a very very powerful impact and 3000 people um, were saved on that first day itself so you know you find different people in the book of acts then you would find uh, you know john in the ministry along with peter serving together then eventually you find philip okay in the book of uh, um, acts uh, chapter 8 where philip goes to samaria and he does the work of the ministry then eventually you know you find this uh, um, uh, government government official okay uh, also known as saul very uh, very familiar as saul uh, but we look at excuse me yeah we look at his transformation on the road to damascus in acts chapter nine uh, and you know paul saul is transformed into uh, paul and it begins in acts nine and then uh, again you know we uh, read about the ministry of peter continuing and then eventually you know paul emerges once again on the scene uh, and then you have barnabas who is a uh, part of the ministry and they continue to take the gospel out to different parts of the world uh, and then mostly uh, the description is that of paul so in our study here we will go through the book of acts uh, but in the end you know we will touch upon uh, the missionary journeys of paul the life of apostle paul and also his missionary journeys because a large part of the book contains description of the life of apostle paul okay so apostle paul is probably one of the main uh, people with great emphasis in the book of acts so these are all the people that you would find ministering in the book of acts now as we continue on uh, we see that the book of acts uh, uh, makes all of these people as witnesses you know the key scripture the key scripture many of us will agree is um, acts chapter 1 and verse 8 uh, can somebody read that scripture please Acts chapter one and verse eight. Okay. Okay. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and upon the uttermost part of the earth. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dave. So. Uh, the transformation in the lives of the people took place because of the outpouring of the holy spirit and what did they become they became witnesses okay they became witnesses so uh, what jesus said in in the gospels when he said i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it you know you find that happening through the witnesses witnesses who have received the baptism in the holy holy spirit okay and they are so powerful so it's almost like uh when you look at the book of acts uh, has anybody seen forest fire at least on tv news you've seen forest fire 
Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, you have. You have. So I like to imagine it like that. You know, it's like a forest fire. The baptism in the Holy Spirit took place, and after that, you can see the fire just spreading. Okay. And when you look at forest, when you consider forest fire, it's not easy to put it out. Uh, and now I remember um, a couple of years ago, you had that um, uh, forest fire in Australia. right and it just the government just struggled to put it uh, off they you know they ultimately started praying for rain because that would be the only way to put off the fire right uh, so even in the book of acts you find different people governmental authorities influential uh, you know <clears throat> people trying to stop the work uh, that was being done through the church but uh, the work just keeps spreading and in this verse we saw that uh, jesus said you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in jerusalem judea samaria and to the ends of the earth you know that's like the forest fire right so moving out from jerusalem where they were all the way to the ends of the earth so uh, i just want to show you a picture right now uh, this is a map of these places that were mentioned okay i'm just going <clears> to <throat> show my entire screen and then um, move to that picture so kindly bear with me okay now i hope you can see the picture everyone can you yeah we can now yes, okay excellent excellent yes so remember was um, what acts 1 verse 8 what did jesus say you shall be my witnesses in where where Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah. So can you can you see Jerusalem? Yes. Okay, great. Then Judea. Okay. So Judea is the region. Uh, you know, close to Jerusalem. So Judea, Samaria, right? So it's almost like concentric circles. You're covering larger parts of uh, communities and regions as you go forward so you shall be my witnesses in jerusalem judea samaria and to the ends of the earth now obviously in the 30 years when uh, the book of acts um, uh, the events took place you didn't see them going to you know every part of the world like every continent that didn't happen but you know uh, whatever is covered in those 30 years it's very clear that the gospel was spreading far and wide and very very quickly so the ends of the earth as far as the book of acts is concerned is this this uh, uh, boundary over here right so there are different places mentioned here and we will look at each one of them as we go ahead so you have uh, the region of galash galatia you have cities very very important cities that we will talk about soon there's colosse ephesus then you know the region uh, macedonia you have uh, uh, cities like thessalonica philippi corinth and eventually when <coughs> paul is tried he is uh, asked or uh, he needs to go to rome so he makes the journey to rome where he is uh, finally tried okay so this is the extent uh, of the uh, the geographical extent of the book of acts and uh, just the way acts chapter 1 uh, and verse 8 talks about the people of god becoming witnesses you observe uh, this spread going forward from jerusalem going to some uh, impacting judea samaria and the ends of the earth okay now again in this uh, <clears throat> overview we also see here acts chapter 1 to acts chapter 5 a lot of uh, events that take place are all in the city of jerusalem now we will study 
that uh, when the outpouring of the uh, uh, Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit happened, the disciples along with other followers were in the upper room. Okay, And this upper room is in Jerusalem. The temple so they had actually come to jerusalem uh, for worship and uh, many people from different uh, parts had come to the city of jerusalem for worship and uh, the church is birthed at that time and then you know different things happen uh, as far as the growth of the church is concerned so acts chapter 1 to acts chapter 5 mostly like you know you will hear about um, jerusalem and then the next region. Remember, I told you about uh, Philip going to Samaria and all that. So you see the next region, which is Judea and Samaria, from Acts chapter six to Acts chapter nine, and then of course in Acts chapter ten to uh, Acts chapter twenty-eight. You know, further from Samaria, uh, there will be many uh, missionary journeys that Paul will undertake, and then he will come and uh, be part of you know, these, some of these cities that uh, are shown here uh, in the map. Okay, So this is how the geographical spread looks uh, uh, of the uh, events of the Book of Acts. So I want to pause for a moment and just want to check if you are all doing okay or you're finding it like, oh man, this is too much, ma'am. We can't handle it right now. So are you comfortable? Any thoughts, any comments, any questions at this point, please? Ma'am, actually, okay, I that's great. Understand. That's great. So, yes, Manu. Um, actually, I didn't understand Acts one to five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Acts one to five. Thank you for that uh, question. All I'm saying is, we will see many things happening when we go through those chapters. All of those events are taking place in Jerusalem. That's the only point which I made, right? So the geographical spread. Initially, what did I talk about? I talked about the people. There are different people whom you will learn about in the book of Acts. Then the second thing I mentioned is the places, okay? Uh, as per Acts 1-8, you see many things happening in uh, Jerusalem first, and then it spreads, like the forest fire I told you, isn't it? So Sam uh, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. So uh, is that okay, Manu? Does it make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Uh, then we will proceed ahead, and uh, we will see what else we can cover today. So. We've understood, you know, the geography of uh, uh, the book of Acts. Now, uh, when we see the kind of communities uh, that are one for the Lord Jesus, uh, you, s you notice that Jesus was ministering mainly to the Jews. Okay, If you remember that incident when the uh, Syrophoenician woman comes to Jesus and asks him to heal her demon-possessed child, uh, Jesus says the children's bread cannot be given to the dogs. Okay, So what was he actually saying? Basically, he was pointing out that there, there is a law Okay. And according to the old covenant, all the promises, all the blessings of God belong to the Jews. And Jesus came as a minister of that uh, covenant initially, right? And uh, when he was still walking the earth, you know, he was uh, primarily ministering to the Jews. So he could not take that blessing and give it to the uh, other communities is what he was saying. But, you know, through faith, when she trusted him and she had faith in God and she says even the dogs uh, uh, can, um, even the dogs uh, can have the crumbs. You know, Jesus was so amazed by her faith and the rule that existed, the law that he would only minister to the Jews because of her faith. You know, he even ministered to a Gentile. 
right? Uh, but that was the the foretaste of what was going to happen later in the book of Acts. Even in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit is poured out on the people, they are primarily Jews from different regions. Okay, and uh, the ministry continues uh, among the Jews for a long time. It's only in Acts chapter ten that uh, you know you notice. Peter is being sent to the Gentiles, and for them it was a forbidden thing. Like they would never go and interact with the Gentiles. But remember Acts one eight. What what did uh, Jesus tell them that you will be witnesses to many regions and many communities? So now you also observe that the the gospel is going out from the Jews to the Gentiles. Right, so that is what the Lord Jesus came to do uh, in the gospel. We usually uh, say that scripture, uh, you know, which says, "God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son." Uh, God so loved the world. Okay, the world includes many communities, and in the Book of Acts, you see uh, that spread happening. So, uh, no longer was the gospel limited to the Jews, but it. Move to the Gentiles by the direction of God, by the direction of the Holy Spirit. So in Acts ten, you know, we will we will also see how Peter was hesitating. He did not actually want to go and minister to a Gentile, but the Holy Spirit speaks to him and says, "When people come to take you, don't say anything. You just go." Right. So uh, God confirms that to his heart and said, "says that." Whatever work of redemption the Lord Jesus has done on the cross, it is not limited to one community, one sect, right, of people, but it is meant for everybody, every human being on the face of the earth. So, in the book of Acts, you see that spread happening. So, initially, it's only the Jewish people till uh, about Acts chapter ten, but in Acts chapter ten, the gospel, the Cornelius and his household, they are the first family. Of Gentiles who accept the gospel and they are also baptized in the Holy Spirit, and God shows that He accepts all communities, right? And in those times, the Gentiles were considered, uh, you know, very, very um, uh, low by the Jews. But think about this: the the gospel became. Uh, a portion for the Gentiles as well, and the Holy Spirit did not. In fact, when uh, Peter was speaking, we read that the Holy Spirit was actually poured out on them. So the gospel moves from the Jews to the Gentiles, and then you know there are different uh, cities that I showed you. All those cities uh, and uh, you know the the various uh, groups of people who lived there, they all received the gospel, and this spread. You know, you see this spread happening through uh, believers, apostles who step out. So initially, in the Church of uh, uh, Jerusalem, you have uh, the work of God happening, and you find that they don't stay put there and and say, "Wow, this is amazing!" You know, we are experiencing the supernatural power of God. So let's all be happy over here. But you see these. believers and uh, you know the apostles as well stepping out and they go to different regions to uh, uh, have people hear what the lord jesus has done for them and uh, you know offer the uh, the uh, plan of redemption to them and say do you accept this and then you have regions and regions of people uh, who commit their lives to the lord jesus as well and they also become witnesses for this gospel so this is uh, the next thing we observe that the gospel is spreading from community to community and it is uh, touching very many communities now you can only imagine when it says the ends of the uh, earth right to impact the ends of the earth that includes many many communities and at least this started in the book of acts this spread started in the book of acts okay now uh, some of the other things that we will uh, see in the book of acts is uh, the fact that the lord jesus is preached as the messiah 
there are uh, wonderful sermons you have peter sermons you have uh, paul speaking about how he got uh, saved how he was transformed uh, on the road to damascus but in all of these sermons in all of these messages one of the central things that you will observe is that they are proclaiming the lord jesus as the messiah they talk about the death resurrection uh, you know death burial and resurrection of the lord jesus christ so jesus is that central message uh, in whatever they say and then you would also uh, notice that they quote old testament scriptures quite a bit and why do they quote old testament scriptures because as jews first of all they were well aware of the uh, uh, scriptures and uh, they wanted to proclaim the fulfillment of the prophetic word of the old testament so you know, you'll you'll see many many references where peter says you know this is that the prophecy of joel uh, uh, is now being fulfilled in the outpouring of the holy spirit you know, you'll find paul also uh, quote lot of things from the old testament so basically they are saying jesus is the messiah and look you know jews or look at this the uh, the one that you were waiting for he has already come and we are actually his witnesses and why do you oppose us right so uh, jesus is the central message and you find uh, several quotations of the old testament now in the book of acts you would also see uh, references to uh, certain teachings okay, the apostles teachings what are the apostles teachings they are basically uh, you know whatever the jews believed in uh, and the teachings of jesus because the apostles lived with jesus so uh, whatever they had learned the apostles from the jewish scriptures and the teachings of jesus they would pass on to the rest of the people who joined the church so you have the apostles teachings what are the some of the other teachings that that you see in the book of acts the teaching of the kingdom of god even when the resurrected christ ministers to the disciples before his ascension uh, a theme that he liked to talk on was the kingdom of god so he taught them many things about the kingdom of god and uh, you know you you see that um, the grace of god right you you understand the grace of god in the uh, book of acts because the gospel is now going out to the so called uh, restricted and uh, you know low uh, communities that, that the jews considered uh, at that point so these are all some of the themes that um, you would see in the book of acts uh, and you know you would also see very many supernatural works of god so what i'll do is at this point i will pause we only have 5 minutes so um uh, we'll take some time to maybe you know have your thoughts and then i'll come back and uh, i will continue from where i stopped so any thoughts at this point any comments from you Yeah, I hope you're getting a um, an overview, right? Of of yes, the book. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So so far, um, is there anything that has touched you? The thing is, uh, uh, when you said well, wild uh, fire, that's mm. like the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit came. Yes. And. Uh, the first preaching only 3000 people got saved and uh, we can see the entire book the revival the gospel is spreading like a wildfire mm -hmm. that's really uh, whenever uh, i go through the book of acts the fire of revival is rekindled in our hearts yes and we want to see that uh, moment in our generation to mm -hmm. multitudes come to the saving knowledge of christ mm -hmm. that's a wonderful book to study again and again and see the work of the holy spirit yes yes Yes, definitely, definitely. Thank you, thank you, Thomas. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. So, anything else that has uh, touched you? It'll be good to know.
So uh, since Thomas mentioned here revival, the term revival, uh, many a time the book of Acts is also termed as uh, church in revival. Okay, so uh, the church which was on fire for God and uh, spreading the fire uh, of revival. So the book of Acts can be considered as a church in revival as well. Okay, so yes. So these are some of the key things uh, in the book of Acts and uh, uh, we will stop now. We will come back in about 10 minutes and we will continue uh, with a little more introduction on the book of Acts. Okay, so please feel free to um, uh, stop and take a break and we will get back together soon. Thank you. <laughs>